Coming up on Arirang News. Following a court ruling that dismissed doctors' request to stop the medical school admissions hike, the South Korean government stresses that it'll successfully complete the medical reform. But doctors resist, saying that this is a death sentence for the country's medical system. South Korea saw a recovery in employment in April, with the number of new jobs added on year surpassing the 200,000 mark for the first time in three months, led by solid exports. North Korea yet again fires a number of short-range ballistic missiles toward the East Sea. This follows a joint fighter jet drill conducted by South Korea and the U.S. and a summit between leaders of China and Russia. Good evening. It's 9 p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. Urging doctors to return to their posts, the South Korean government stresses that it'll successfully complete the medical reform. This comes after a court ruling that dismissed doctors' request to stop the medical school admissions hike. But doctors continue to resist. Our Choi soo starts us off. The Seoul High Court on Thursday rejected an application submitted by medical students, exam candidates, professors and trainee doctors to halt the government's plan to expand the number of new medical students by 2000, starting in 2025. The South Korean government stated on Friday that it respects the court's decision and will complete health care reform successfully. The government deeply appreciates the court's wise judgment. The government will engage more actively in dialogue with the medical community and focus all our efforts on strengthening the emergency medical system to minimize the impact on patients. The court ruled that medical school professors, trainee doctors and exam candidates are not parties involved in the lawsuit and dismissed their claims. Regarding medical students, while they are considered as a party, the court rejected their claims due to concerns of the significant implications on public welfare. Regardless of the government winning the second trial, trainee doctors announced on Thursday that they would not return to their post and the medical community will also appeal to set up a third trial. However, it seems that this won't take place until at least mid-June, while the official admission guards for each university will be finalized by this month. During the prolonged dispute, the medical community has filed over 20 lawsuits to the court, but all applications were rejected in the first instance. The medical community argues that the meeting to discuss the quarter was too brief, lasting just an hour, and was nothing more than a formal act to confirm the number brought by the government. On April 30th, the Seoul High Court requested specific evidence from the government regarding the increase of 2,000 to the mass school quarter within the appeal filed by the medical community. Last week, the government submitted approximately 50 items of documented evidence, including research reports and meeting records. This court's decision on Thursday is pivotal, as now the government can enter the final stages of its medical reform plan. Choi soo Arirang News. Now moving on to the labor market. In April, South Korea saw a recovery in employment with a number of new jobs added on year, surpassing the 200,000 mark for the first time in three months, led by solid exports and manufacturing. Our Moon ae covers the rebound and more. South Korea's job market showed recovery on the back of rising exports in April. According to Statistics Korea on Friday, there were 28.69 million people in employment last month, a rise of some 261,000 compared to the same month last year. The rate of employment for people aged 15 years old and above rose by 0.3 percent on year to 63 percent, which is the highest figure for any month of April since data was first compiled in 1982. The job market has seen fluctuations over the past few months, posting over 300,000 more people in employment on year in January and February, before a smaller increase of 173,000 in March. 
The agency attributed this to a rise in employment in manufacturing as exports have been booming due to an upturn in the semiconductor industry. The manufacturing sector hired 100,000 more people in April on year, and this is the biggest increase seen since November 2022. Other sectors that also saw an upswing in employment were the healthcare and telecommunications industries. On the other hand, the retail sector has been seeing a decline in employment for some time now, and a spokesperson from Statistics Korea explained why. Wholesale and retail industries are becoming automated, and with the boom in online transactions, employment in wholesale and retail has been continuously decreasing. With South Korea's aging population, employment among those aged over 60 years old has continued to increase. 292,000 more people aged 60 and over were in employment in April this year compared to the same month last year. For those in their late 20s, the employment rate rose on year as it has been doing for the past three years to reach an all-time high for any month of April at 72.7 percent. During a meeting headed by the first vice minister of the Ministry of Economy and Finance on the same day to discuss the latest figures, the government pledged to support the creation of high-quality jobs in the private sector and develop job support initiatives for vulnerable groups. Moon hye Arirang News. President Yoon song yeol has emphasized the, need, emphasized the need to tackle the nation's low birth rate, saying the government needs to thoroughly review the structure of financial projects and improve the delivery and execution methods. Yoon's remarks came as he presided over a national physical strategy meeting on Friday in Sejong with ministers and top officials of the ruling People's Power Party. Looking back to his past two years in office, he also said the decision to go with sound physical policy was a good one, citing some positive upward trends in various global economic indicators, but emphasized that it doesn't mean cutting spending, rather spending efficiently. Upgrading the concept of cultural heritage to national heritage, President Yoon song yeol on Friday celebrated the launch of the Korea Heritage Service, rebranded from the Cultural Heritage Administration. In his commemorative address on Friday, the president said, the management of cultural property going forward will be future-oriented, with active efforts to excavate, preserve and inherit national heritage. He added he would expand the scope of national heritage, particularly when it comes to intangible assets, to encompass the unique aspects of life, including traditional customs, folklore, festivals and nature. Yun further promised to make South Korea a global cultural hub by sharing its heritage with the world. And to celebrate the opening of the Korea Heritage Service, a special exhibit is being offered at Chongmyo Shrine, honoring the royal ancestors of the Joseon dynasty using Lego pieces. Our Yi shi takes us there. Over 20,000 pieces of Lego come together to create a special build, the layout of the Jongmyo royal ancestral ritual. In this 21st century representation of one of the most significant state ceremonies from the Joseon dynasty by artist Colin Jin, hundreds of officiants, musicians and dancers presided by the king perform a special ritual to honor the royal ancestors. The work is on display at a special exhibit at the Jongmyo shrine located in central Seoul. Starting today, the Cultural Heritage Administration has been transformed into the Korea Heritage Service. To celebrate its launch, we have prepared an exhibition hall where visitors can learn about traditional Jongmyo rituals and music, which are both recognized as world heritages, both tangible and intangible. Jongmyo is where the kings of the Joseon dynasty performed sacrificial rites and enshrined the royal ancestral tablets of deceased kings and queens. They believe the spirits of the ancestors would enter and leave the tablets, blessing the descendants performing the rituals. Both the shrine and the rituals performed at the site are recognized as cultural heritages by the South Korean government and UNESCO. And now, for the first time ever, visitors can take a step into the pillow-like building called Mangmyoru that housed the management office of the shrine back in history. From here, the kings of Joseon would wait, thinking of their ancestors, until the Jongmyo ritual began. During the wait, they often wrote poetry in peace. 
From the king's seat, a magnificent view of the pond landscape to represent the land and the sky. And it's really beautiful to see. Um, I just entered the ritual, how they did the, the ritual. So it's very, um, it broadening my, it, I learned quite a lot. And I feel that the Korean culture is very beautiful. And I feel that the history is just really amazing. Mang Myoru will remain open to the public until the end of June, offering a peek into the royal history dating back over 600 years. Lee shi Hu, Arirang News. Now to a beauty contest like no other. The Chunhyang traditional beauty pageant judges contestants on the traditional Korean values found in the story of Chunhyang. But this year, it has also opened the doors to international contestants. Our Yi and he went to Namwon City to find out more. Every year, Namwon City in Jeonbuk State hosts the Chunyang Traditional Beauty Pageant, and the 94th Miss Chunyang was selected this year. The pageant is inspired by the beautiful love story of Chunyangjeon, or the tale of Chunyang, one of the country's most cherished folk tales, which started here in Gwangalluan Garden in Namwon. Chunyang and Mungyong's love first blossomed here in Gwangalluan Garden. The South Korean Romeo and Juliet with a happy ending, Chunyangjeon, has since been made into more than 100 versions. But the classic love story of Chunyang and Mungyong never changes. And it all started here when Lee Mungyong fell in love at first sight when he saw Chunyang on the swing. So what is the beauty of Chunyang that is still celebrated today? The contestants try to show qualities encapsulated in the term chunyangdaum in Korean, which demonstrates a blend of physical beauty, cultural understanding, intelligence, and moral integrity. The national chunyang contest made a significant shift from this year, transforming into a global chunyang beauty pageant, opening the door for non-Korean citizens. This year, five of the 32 finalists flew into Korea from China, Japan, Indonesia, Vietnam, and North America, and two of those finalists were non-Korean citizens. The Korean wave, or Hallyu, holds considerable influence worldwide. So we thought, instead of sticking to tradition, why not create an event where young people from across the globe can all join? The evaluation is relatively rigorous, taking into account demeanor and manners that reflect Korea's traditional values. Participants wear the traditional Korean clothing called hanbok during the contest, demonstrating traditional Korean beauty. First of all, it is a fantastic experience for me to, to see the many contestants from all over the world. So it is important for me to see the, who understand, the people who understand Korean culture and language. And, uh... To accommodate international participants, a new Global Muse Award is introduced, in addition to the existing Chunyang titles of Jin, Son, Mi, Jong, Suk, and Hyun. For 10 days, all the finalists stayed together to practice for the contest, covering a range of talents from self-introductions to showcasing their dance skills. I've never learned how to dance before, so it was a completely new experience, and that in itself was really challenging, but it's been a really enjoyable time. Following the multiple rounds of evaluation, the ultimate decision is made during the final stage of assessment. Participants give their best on stage for the crown of Chin which represents the highest honor among the six titles of Chunyang. The title of Jin was claimed by Kim Jong-yoon, who is a student at Ihua Women's University. First of all, I'm deeply honored to be chosen as the very first global Miss Chunyang. Additionally, I was selected as Jin, wearing the heaviest crown, and I will take on the responsibility to widely promote the beauty of Namwon. And the Global Muse Award went to Michelle Sebom U from the United States and Usua, an overseas Korean from Indonesia. I feel like now that the Chinyang Festival has become a global event, it really indicates how much Korean culture is spreading, and I'm so ex incredibly honored to become a part of that. I have learned so much things from here, so much things about Korean culture, about Namwon about Chinyang. This year's winners will also serve as Namun City's ambassadors for the next three years taking the lead in promoting local culture, festivals and the advance of Chinyang values on a global scale. 
The pageant is not just a celebration of beauty, but also a tribute to the timeless tale of Chunyang's love and resilience. May the spirit of Chunyang's enduring love continue to inspire us. Yuni, Arirang News, Namwon. North Korea has yet again fired multiple short-range ballistic missiles toward the East Sea. The provocation comes a day after the leaders of Russia and China voiced opposition to Washington's, quote, acts of military intimidation with its allies. Our defense correspondent Chen Minjong reports. A fresh round of missile provocations from the north. The regime appears to have launched multiple short-range ballistic missiles toward the East Sea from the easternmost city of Wonsan. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff detected the launch at around 3.10 p.m. Friday and estimated that the missiles traveled around 300 kilometers. The launch comes more than three weeks after the North conducted firing drills involving 600-millimeter super-large multiple rocket launchers. It also comes a day after the leaders of Russia and China met in Beijing for a summit, where they issued a joint statement opposing Washington and its allies, quote, acts of military intimidation against the regime. Yet on the same day, South Korea and the U.S. conducted joint air drills involving the world's most advanced F-22 stealth fighter jets from the U.S. The launch does not seem like a drill for performance improvement, but rather a show of force in response to the recent Seoul-Washington air drill, or a warning against the upcoming large-scale combined exercises in August. The military said it immediately captured, tracked, and monitored the missile launches and shared related information with the U.S. and Japan. The JCS strongly condemned the launch, calling it a provocation that seriously threatens peace and stability on the Korean peninsula. It added that it is closely looking into North Korea's provocations under a solid rock U.S. joint defense posture. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. North Korea has reportedly started replanting mines on the northern side of the military demarcation line. According to a military official in Seoul on Friday, Pyongyang appears to have been replanting mines and erecting barbed wire and guard posts within the demilitarized zone since last month. Heavy equipment has been dispatched for the operation, which involves about a thousand soldiers. Moving heavy equipment into the DMZ without prior consultation with the United Nations Command is a violation of the Armistice Agreement. Seoul's Joint Chiefs of Staff said that the military has been monitoring the North's activities and is closely cooperating with the UNC. In April, the military observed that North Korea was installing mines on all three roads connecting the two Koreas. On the second leg of his two-day state visit to China, Russian President Vladimir Putin is now in Harbin, a place that was once called Little Moscow. Our Kim Bo-kyung has more on what this visit means. One stop Little Moscow, Harbin is the capital of Heilongjiang province, which has strong links to Russia, having been home to many Russian expatriates. President Vladimir Putin landed in Harbin on Friday on the second leg of a two-day state visit to China. After he paid tribute at a memorial for soldiers who died in battles for the liberation of Chinese territory from Japan during World War II, he attended several trade and bilateral cooperation forums, including the 8th China-Russia Expo and the 4th China-Russia Forum on Interregional Cooperation in the city. In these, Putin emphasized that the two countries' energy alliance will grow even stronger, underlining that the alliance acts as a guarantor of energy security. The inseparable Russian-Chinese partnership is a direct influence on the development of the two countries' economies and will reliably provide energy security, stimulate the creation of new industries and well-paid employment, and improve the welfare and quality of life in our countries for our people. His schedule in Harbin also included a visit to Harbin Institute of Technology, one of China's top science and engineering universities. Called China's cradle of engineers, it was sanctioned by the U.S. in 2020 and added to Washington's blacklist amid the U.S.-China technology war. Putin's visit to Harbin comes the day after Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping held several meetings in Beijing on Thursday.
While celebrating the 75th anniversary of diplomatic relations between their countries, the two leaders issued a joint statement on deepening China and Russia's comprehensive strategic partnership. We jointly signed and issued a joint statement by China and Russia on deepening our comprehensive strategic partnership in the new era on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. While expressing their opposition to military intimidation by the U.S. and its allies toward North Korea, they also shared views on other issues, including Ukraine, with Putin saying he would inform the Chinese leader in detail about the situation in Ukraine. Meanwhile, regarding the Putin-Xi summit, the U.S. criticized China's stance, saying Beijing cannot have its cake and eat it too when it comes to its relationship with Russia, while brushing off their reaffirmation of ties. Kim bo Arirang News. Israel plans to intensify its ground invasion into Rafah, the southernmost city in Gaza, brushing off international concerns about the threat to civilians. Israeli Defense Minister Joab Gallant announced on Thursday that the military would send more troops and push more deeply into Rafah, where thousands of Palestinian civilians are taking shelter. Earlier, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also stressed that the battle in Rafah is critical to eradicating attacks from Hamas, as Israel sees the region as the militant group's last stronghold. Also on Thursday, at the Arab League summit in Manama, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi accused Israel of evading efforts to reach a ceasefire in its war with Hamas in Rafah. South Korea will inject 50 million U.S. dollars into a multilateral fund that will provide support for Ukraine. The Ministry of Finance announced on Friday that Development Finance Division Director Kim Jae-hwan attended the 33rd annual meeting of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development held in Armenia this week. During a bilateral meeting with EBRD Vice President for Policy Mark Bauman, the two signed an agreement to provide support for Ukraine's post-war reconstruction through a crisis response special fund. South Korea is to focus additional aid in its key areas of strength, including infrastructure, energy and water resources. It will be easy to do outdoor activities this weekend without worrying about dust. Temperatures will rise further over the weekend. Seoul will rise to 28 degrees Celsius on Sunday and with most areas rising above 25. It will be as hot as early summer during the day. However, the daily temperature differences will continue to widen. Later today and tomorrow, strong winds of about 20 meters per second will hit the mountainous areas of Gangwon-do and northeastern Gyeongsangbuk-do provinces. High waves, which are high enough to cross breakwaters, are expected on the east coast. Please take extra precautions. Daejeon and Daegu will start off at 13 degrees. Highs will move up to 28 in Gwangju, Gyeongju 30 degrees. Clear and warm weather is expected to continue without any rain forecast for the time being. That's all for Korea. Here are the weather conditions around the world. Well, that is all for this newscast tonight. Thank you for watching. Hope everyone has a great weekend and a good night.